a landmark deal for Japan with Australia that will see the two countries draw even closer together on defence and security. And for a close look at this deal, we're joined by Senior Associate Professor Stephen Nagi. He's from the International Christian University in Tokyo. Professor Nagi, if we look at this deal, it's called the Reciprocal uh, Access Agreement. And uh, literally, it could mean or it should mean that militaries from two sides can meet each other in each other's countries more easily and take part in military drills. But do you see this expanding beyond this so that this RAA can underpin, say, more comprehensive and profound integration? Well, I think very, uh, that the reciprocal access agreement is very important in terms of Japan and Australia's security. Uh, first, it anchors the United States into the region by seeing that Japan and Australia are working hard to uh, to secure their own strategic interests within the region through this agreement. Uh, second, it enhances the cooperation that Japan and Australia can have vis-a-vis -vis each other. That means Japan can send its self-defense forces to Australia for training, to train alongside its Australian uh, uh, friends, as well as the United States and vice versa. And lastly, I think it sends uh, a strong message that the two countries can work together in strategic areas of priority, including Southeast Asia, where Singapore is located. Professor Nagi, China gave an indicative response to what it feels about this agreement, even before it was signed, saying that it hoped that the Pacific would be an ocean of peace, not a place to make waves. What exactly are Australia and Japan attempting to achieve here in terms of addressing their shared security challenges? And as, is it all at the at risk of stoking Beijing's anger? Well, frankly, I think both Australia and Japan, as well as other countries within the region, are concerned about gray zone operations in the East China Sea and the South China Sea. They're concerned about e increased um, bellicose rhetoric across the Taiwan Straits. And they've watched over the past you know, five to 10 years as China has built and, and militarized artificial I islands in the South China Sea. I think that from Japan and Australia's uh, point of view, that uh, China appears to be a revisionist power within the region that is uh, really bent on revising the regional security architecture so that the rules of the road are really uh, favor of Beijing rather than being arbitrated by international law. And in that sense, the cooperation between Japan and Australia through the reciprocal access agreement is very important in, 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 in helping buttress international law within the region through cooperation amongst each other but also cooperation within uh, Southeast Asia and Drenel to try and strengthen the strategic autonomy of the countries within that region. And I think that will be critical to stability and critical to peace uh, within the region moving forward. Professor Nagi, you mentioned the situation over the, across the Taiwan Strait. Now, Japan, of course, making uh, increasingly high profile and increasingly frequent comments on this. So we saw last year's uh, defense white paper where for the first time the Taiwan Strait, the situation there was raised as a national concern for Japan. And that matters because of Japan's pacifist constitution. So if you make Taiwan a matter of national security for Japan, Japan therefore is cleared under this constitution to act on Taiwan. Well, I think that Taiwan represents a strategic uh, security interest for Japan, but also all the other countries within the Indo-Pacific region. Uh, it's, you know, it, it, it uh, is part of the sea lines of communication that transport uh, important uh, energy resources throughout the region. And of course, imports and exports out of the Japanese economy. If there was friction or a conflict across the Taiwan Straits between Taiwan and China, of course, this would affect Japanese security interests. And it would frankly affect the security interests of many states within the region. And with that, I don't think it's, it's, it's brain surgery or a Nobel Prize winning notion to say that um, what happens in Taiwan matters for Japan's security. And in that sense, uh, I think that Japan has an increased interest in sending a very strong signal to Taiwan that it does not support independence. And it sends another signal to Beijing that it does not support a forced reunification. What it supports is the status quo and a rules-based approach to dealing with challenges within the region. Meantime, Professor Nagi, there is this row ongoing 
between China and Lithuania over Taiwan. Uh, Taipei has been trying to soften the blow somewhat economically uh, for Lithuania, promising to invest where uh, China perhaps has pulled out of the Baltic state. Will this prompt perhaps China to clamp down even harder on the island, though? Well, I think that Taiwan is probably already stressed in terms of the economic um, coercion or, or pressures that Beijing can bring bring to bear on Taiwan. Um, but I do think Lithuania and countries that uh, will cooperate and support Lithuania in its uh, in its efforts to uh, promote uh, stronger uh, bilateral uh, relations with Taiwan under a one China policy will continue to continue to feel the strain of some kind of economic coercion. We've already seen German businesses being pressured to uh, cut off ties with Lithuanian businesses. And I think that we're going to see growing calls for this kind of economic coercion against European friends of Lithuania. This will be a challenge. It will be seen as economic coercion against a smaller state of the European Union. And I think it's likely to backfire on China in terms of shifting the European Union and Lithuania's position on Taiwan. Rather, it's going to bring and create more consensus amongst European nations that they need to stand up to economic coercion, uh, whether it's Russia, whether it's China, or even whether it's the United States. Professor Nagi, I return to an earlier point you made about Taiwan. You said Japan needs to send a message to Taiwan that it does not support independence, while at the same time also warning Beijing it does not support forceful reunification. So, in other words, maintaining the long-standing position of strategic ambiguity. But in Washington, we're seeing lots of voices calling for more clarity, removing that ambiguity. Where, is, where does Japan stand on this? Be more or less ambiguous in terms of telling both sides what they will do should either side, act, either side move beyond the status quo right now? That's right. Prominent voices such as Richard Haas from the Council of Foreign Relations really are talking about strategic clarity when it comes to Taiwan. And we have other, I think, salient voices like uh, Bonnie Glazer of the German Marshall Fund that are saying, no, strategic ambiguity is the best way to preserve the United States position. In terms of Japan's position, I think they share the notion that strategic ambiguity is probably the most uh, effective way of maintaining strong relations with Beijing, as well as Taiwan. But I think they're also being very clear in terms of both parties that really the status quo and peace and stability across the Taiwan Straits is something that Japan not only values, but it's willing to contribute uh, to if both parties are committed to that uh, endeavor. At this particular stage, I think what we've seen is um, Beijing really, you know, fly into the air defense identification zones of Taiwan, uh, talk about force reunification, and really step up, you know, the, the frogmen uh, kinds of threats that I think many uh, countries, including uh, countries as well as political entities, including Taiwan, really worry about in terms of of creating facts on the ground and, and changing the status quo fundamentally in Beijing's favor. Uh, Japan will continue to voice uh, that the status quo is important for. Uh, Japan, and that it will continue to uh, think about Taiwan's future through uh, the lens of Japan's security moving forward. Oh, thanks for that, Professor Nagi. Senior Associate Professor Stephen Nagi from the International Christian University in Tokyo.